Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Tom Mizu. You watch my channel, Mizu14, and I'm here doing a view of Law and Order SVU Season 20, Episode 7. Now, I am going to try to catch up. Law and Order SVU is coming back January 10th. This is next Thursday, and I have I I have did the view up to first six episodes but I had stopped and I didn't finish the last three so the first yeah the first couple episodes so I didn't finish the last next three so I wanted to catch up catch up on it before it start back up again because I don't want to be far behind so I wanted to catch up and get these videos up out there now, I'm trying to do as much as I can. If I can't do all the last four before next Thursday, at least I do at least one or two more calling day. And then you start fresh when next Thursday comes. So, I'll try to do as much as I can. But, here go the episode. All right, it was nice. It was a really good one. So, we get the victim. Like I said, I'm not doing any side stories. So, we get the victim, Kayla. She was in a car. All crazy because she worked at the after party at the restaurant that she was working in, Fall Rockaway Restaurant. And she, um, her boss, Andrew, asked her to work the, at the party for some of her clients, some of his clients that was like known and he wanted to please them, get them drinks and stuff like that. She was there, she took some couple of drinks herself. And she was last seen going down to the wine cellar with Andrew at around 3 o'clock. And that's it. Then we all got the thing that she was in a car, her clothes, her blouse was ripped open, and she was going crazy attack mode, the Uber driver was trying to get her out the car, the police thinking that he's trying to rape her and do something to her, and that wasn't the case. Basically, he was trying to get her out the car because she was going crazy, he was trying to get her out, like she got a destination to get out, but she was going off the board, he was trying to wake her up because she was in a daze, and then when she woke up, she just started fighting, so it was like... It was a crazy tap mode. Long story short, with that, she said that the Uber driver didn't do anything to her. It wasn't him. But she didn't remember what a lot thing that happened to her because she was drunk. She blacked out and everything. And then she, the next minute she know, she woke up in the Uber car. So it was like, she didn't know exactly. But it wasn't the Uber driver. And she didn't really want to press charges because he pressed charges on me. No, so I'm going to get out of here. She don't want to talk. I understand that. Maybe she know a little bit about something about what happened to her, but she don't want to be in the part of open up a case or say anything bad about her because she want to keep her job. She'll fear of losing her job. So she, if she say anything, she think that she would get fired. So um, basically that was that. So that's when they went to question and see what she was there like that. So then we get more information about um, they went to see Andrew. Andrew is the boss because a couple of people saying that the uh, bartender told detectives Finn and Carisi that he saw last saw Kayla going down the bar um, wine cellar with Andrew. So they went to talk to Andrew. Andrew was the little prick there. He was trying to listen to their questions. He was trying like to say anything. He was getting trying to drink wine and say about the wine, all before trying to avoid the question on what he was trying to be asked. So then I was like, come on, like. Stop it. You can't really keep doing that. So, Carissa says, come on, come on. Cut this crap. Let's get down to what it is. Is that Kayla. Kayla? He said, yeah, I need her to do something for me. And she came down. And on so short, it was like, she was like, what? She was saying, he said, yeah, sex. He said, yeah, we got a little physical a little bit together. But it was mostly consensual sex. And she said, they say that Kayla got sexual assaulted. She said, what? You trying to say that? She trying to say that I made her. I said no, that's not happening. We had consensual with sex. It was we had multiple times of sex. So this is not the first time we had sex with each other. So it was like okay, and she wanted it. So I did not rape her, and he can't put that with me. Did not rape her. So that's come down. That came from that, and it was like all right. So Kayla the next day, Kayla stormed into the freaking office, uh, the building headquarters. And she would say, do y'all question the Andrew? And I started to say, yeah. And the possible way, she said, it's not like that. What you think it is? No, no, no. Y'all give me trouble. I told you to stay out of my life. I didn't want to press charges. He didn't do nothing to me. It's not that serious. It's not black and white that you made it seem like. I said, what? So, 
he said that you wanted to consent to sex with him. It's like that. She said, well, they told that Andrew say this is not the first time he had sex. Like that. She said, well, one time in the Christmas party, but that's it. And I didn't really like it and all that stuff like that. And then it was saying what happened in wine center and all that stuff. She said a couple of drinks and everything. And but she said it wasn't that black and white that you make it seem like. If it's not, it's all in the middle. She he saying that okay. When you were down there, did you wanted to have sex with him? She said, she said no once and all that stuff. But they said, well, if you said no and you didn't want to happen, that's his rape. And um, she said, no, it's not rape till I said it's rape. Rape me. So I guess she did. She's more fair, like I said, and lose her job. And I, sometimes it happens like when you do things to the boss or anything and you with the boss is like that sometimes you want to please the boss so much to um fear the retaliation but at the other thing the boss should not have you do anything that would could jeopardize your job and some of them could do some scrimy sneaky stuff to get you to do some unethical practice in the job to get you to fight, to be fired, all because they want you gone. So they try to belittle you or try and get you close to them, try to get you to drink with them, try and go out with them and stuff like that. And that's what me, like I say, in the workplace, I do my job and I go home. I don't fraternize with none of my bosses. I don't do none of that because I'm not going to try and lose my job for anything. I don't, if I go lose my job, it's because of my performance, not because I'm doing something with the boss or anything. So I'll say no. If I want to do that in my personal life, why would I do that in my professional work life so that's not gonna happen so so she feared that she gonna get fired or she gonna lose her job she gonna lose her opportunity because she can make it six figures out there and she don't want to lose that up so by saying anything towards Andrew because if she once she say something everything is gone and she will not have anything to go go back to so she don't want to say anything so I well, understand because of fear of being cut off if she go through the charges with this the cases so they came about and saying that um, basically, um, so it's hard to stop. But so they came up and they saw that he had other rape charges reported in the past in Brooklyn, but none of the sticks. So they went to talk to the ladies, and basically they all kind of said the same thing. It's like. They was working at his bar all along bar in Brooklyn. They got them drunk. He got him them drunk. Smoke whatever. Got went down to the cellar. Forced them on them. Used his power to threaten them and scare them to do what he want. But basically said, if you don't do this, you go to your job. I'm gonna make a living hell for you or something like that to get them to comply. The fear of uh, having to comply to what your demands are. And I guess the scare tactic is a well-known tactic that predators and rapists use towards their victim to get them to do what they want. If you put fear in them and you hurt them, you threaten their lives, they will comply to what you want. So I guess that's like psychological warfare that people have and that people use to prey on the predators. And, and I guess it worked with these three ladies because she, they was, even though they didn't want it to happen, they was so much that fear that this come on is going on. So when they were forcing them, forcing on them, forcing them on them, they didn't like that they had blacked out. They couldn't understand what was going on. They tuned out. Uh, I can imagine what happened going through when you in that situation where you can't move and you powerless, and that person is um, gonna force yourself at you or stuff, and you can't do much towards them. So you have to help but to lay there and hope this ends and be over with, so you can get out and get gone and not think back, look back, and. Basically, at the end of the session, so he took a souvenir, which is their panties, as a memento of what he did with them. I said, oh, you so oh, sick bastard. So, Stone went to question Hodges because it was stated that Hodges was the one who prosecuted the court's uh, cases. But he failed to go through with the cases. Like, he just dropped. It declined. So, it was like, what? Three stories, witnesses, and they, three stories, and they all was cases was dropped by the prosecutor, um, Hodges. So Stone, who's the ADA, he went to talk to Hodges at his state. He just finished the court thing, and he just talked to him and he said, "I'm investigating an issue on Andrew, um, Andrew." 
And he said, oh, I don't know who Andrew is. He said, good luck with that, and stuff like that. And they was talking, and he said, he asked him, why did you decline to prosecute the cases? So he said the cases was not sticking. It couldn't, it was, um, it couldn't win the cases. It was no rape kit that was going on. They was drunk and alcohol influence. It was no, um, it was no delay, um, no late disclosure or anything. They all had prior sexual relationships with the um, person, so their case was not gonna go, and he couldn't stick with that. But it come to find out, he's a pro, he's a um, for the Me Too movement. He's an advocate for women's rights and stuff like that. So you doing all this stuff, but you didn't fail. You failed to help these ladies when they time of need, when they feel that this person is raping them or did something to them. But you failed to prosecute so they freaking lies feel like it didn't matter so why why I go to authorities and they're gonna shut my case down they're not gonna listen to me and they're gonna think oh it's so crazy and I'm going through all this talking to all these detectives for order for this prosecutor not to prosecute the case so he walk around free when I got this freaking low life job and he can live it up and it's like how lavish living six figures and I'm up here suffering because what he did to me I said hell to the no so I can feel their pain or what they're going through. So, um, Stone went to cook, um, cause Stone went to, um, had a meeting with Benson. And Benson can't believe this. Like, I can't believe that he would just drop these cases like that. And he says nothing we could go by cause it's, it's all stuff. And she says something is not right. You need to go back to talk to him and see what is going on. He said, I really have all that stuff. It's not there. And she said, no, it's up to there. And you need to dig deeper and figure out what's going on because something is not at it right. Why all these cases was dropped and he is so much an advocate for women's rights and the Me Too and all that stuff. So why he would do this. So they went, he went down and talked to him and Chris and him had a little spat and they ain't getting nothing done. Chris got a little offended about why he, what he insinuated with him about these cases that he was coming up or doing stuff that he's not supposed to be doing and that's why he couldn't get these cases prosecuted so Chris was mad so he got up and left so he said you know what I gotta try something I need to talk to Kayla and Benson said you know what don't try to arm wrestle her cause it's not gonna happen he said no I'm gonna be good I know I know I watch somebody who does this for people so I'm good so he went to talk to Kayla, and Kayla said, listen, what's wrong with y'all people? I told y'all to leave me alone. I'm not doing anything. I'm not testifying. And it come, she was still resistant, still resistant to a point that, um, the point that he was like, you know what? It's okay, this too. He was holding a, a panties and trophies, and she stopped. And she said, what? How do you know about that? He said, well, probably he, uh, it's, uh, it's because he had prior cases in Brooklyn that is matches similar to your story. So he's done this before. He's a habitual rapist. And we need to get him off. So he said, I can have the back of you if you start off. Because their case was old. So they can't testify now. But you, since I think because the statute of limitations is over to report this rape and get prosecuted and all that stuff. But you, you still fresh in the gate. So if you open the door, they will follow suit. Cause they know that somebody is investigating that and all that stuff. So I was like, yeah, that is true. So they was like, okay. So at the all of a short, she agreed, but she said, you know what? I need you to arrest him tomorrow. Whatever. What I want to see his face and stuff. So they went to arrest him for the charge of raping uh, Kayla Morgan. And I said, oh, okay. I like, so when they went to the case and the trial and all that stuff, they was talking about the bail and all that stuff, and he would try to get the cases included and stuff, and the, the prosecutor, no, yeah, he's a prosecutor, but the defense attorney said, no, this not going to happen, that's not right, all that stuff, and so, talked to the judge, and he said he went the bonus, I forgot the legal term, so I'm not going to try to botch that, but... The judge asked him to talk, to talk in his private chambers and he would try to explain to him why these credible witnesses are credible for the case and we would try to show a pattern of that his habitual uh, 
rapist that is a consistent thing that he be doing and trying to show proof. And she said, no, it's not about that. This kind of case is about show who done it, not long no, show that leads to this person, not who have done it. And long story short, the judge rule is like, no, I agree. Like this, these ladies and how, why they was dropped and why this case is stuff and how this happened. It's come to a point. It's like no, these critical witnesses is not gonna happen. It's not gonna work. So, all three of them is excluded to testify against this client because it, you don't have no rules on grounds to include them now, while they had the chance before. So he said you need to talk to Chris Hodges and why this part this case was not prosecuted. That's what the judge was saying. He said you need to talk to Chris Hodges. He said, well, you can't use them here. So he excluded them. So he told the Benson and it's like, oh my gosh. He said, really? You can't find any other way? And uh, that's why Benson told him, he said, no, well, you need to go and see something. Something's not right. It needs to be more than what you tell us. All right, so come to find out, it come to find out that Chris and freaking Andrew was buddies. They was high school buddies. They grew up, I guess they still buddies. So I said, that's why it happened. And it's like, they know each other dirt. They know this stuff that they're going on. They were tag teaming like this. So, when Andrew was getting in trouble, Chris was the prosecutor. He didn't want to prosecute Andrew because they're cool with Bunny Bettys. So, he dropped these cases because he's saying that it was bogus cases. They can't, he couldn't win. Well, in actuality, he could have won. But he didn't file it because he buddy buddy with Andrew, who was the person who they, um, these ladies um Accusing him again. So it's like, oh, now we see why he's not doing it. It's not because they had all this stuff. It's because he and Andrew was tight and they close and they was neighborhood friends and they high school buddies. So they know each other. And they was helping each other back. So he helped him along when Andrew was doing things. The reason why he keep getting off and he getting away with it is because the prosecutor, Chris, getting these cases... He could get these cases and they could drop them because he could say it's not, it wasn't worth it. These credible these qu uh, witnesses are not credible. Um, so I was like, damn, bad combination. So he could think he, he's, so Andrew think he's invincible because he has somebody in a, um, in the freaking judicial world that he could get off, if anything, if he come about getting charged. And I said, oh, all right, so. Benson said, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something. I'm going to show your asses, bitch. I know. We're not going to have this. We're going to find some answers. Because I'm not going to sit here looking like stupid. When this girl, no, no. She got raped. And we're going to find justice for her. That's what Benson said. So Benson went to leak the freaking investigation to the paper. And said, I, what's going to happen this tomorrow morning? So when the tomorrow morning read, Finn, Carisi, and Rollins read the paper. And said, girl, what happened? Who leaked that investigation? The best, they guessed that it would be Benson or it was stone and somebody said it would probably be both of them but basically it was Benson that did that and I guess the motive for that doing that is to get a person or somebody to come forward because they were trying to connect that he probably not did, only did this in Brooklyn he probably did it in other places and he probably be more cases that it was not fouled or would not come report and it could be something that if leaking this case they could give people some courage to come forward and it did. It is what this girl named Bethany. She came to the office. She said, "I saw the newspaper. I want to talk to you about something about rape." Like I was just like, "I feel this thing, and I want to say something." And she said, "What?" And she said, "Yeah, I know. And I have it happened to me. I want to report the rape that and a rape happened to me by the, um, the guy." And they said, "Oh, Andrew." She said, "No, Chris Hodges." I said, "Oh, shit, shit, shit." That's how I was thinking. I was say, "You know what? Maybe." And this is my mind. I said maybe Spencer, uh, Spencer, Andrew know a lot. That's the same. Chris and Andrew are buddy buddies. They know each other. So Andrew know a lot of Chris's dirt. So if this come about that he grape him, it's like this is something that Andrew could use against Chris to so make Chris comply to whatever charges and drop the cases so it won't anything come back to him. So what Bethany was telling the story, or she told us that she was 15, it was a house party. It was drinks. She was drinking tequila. She went in the room with two guys. Chris and the other one was Andrew. She couldn't remember the other one. But Emily, her friend, um, confirmed that it was Andrew that was there. It was Chris and Andrew. And Chris is the one that forced himself on Bethany to uh, 
putting their hands on shorts, put a panty down, whatever, to try and have sex while or something like that. So, and it was like, ooh, I was crazy. So they went to talk to Chris about it. And Chris said, what the hell going on? You trying to disrupt me? It's like, I'm going to have you all that stuff. He's he getting mad. He said, I'm talking about this Andrew thing. I'm not doing anything with that. And he said, no, we hear about you. All that stuff. He said, what you talking about? He said, this girl came forward about you vaping on the thing. And he said, Bethany. I don't know Bethany Holmes. He said, well, Emily Fields said like that. He said, I know a little bit about Emily, but Bethany. And he said, oh, uh, now it's clicking in his head. He said, well, yeah, I was there in the room. And it was a ch- woman check. But I didn't know who did anything. It was my friend Andrew. He put everything on Andrew because, you know, Andrew is the rapist. So he could say if he put it on Andrew, it's easier for them to believe that Andrew was did it. So, um... He said, no, Andrew was the one who did that. I would try to push him off on him. I said, if you a big advocate of woman, me too, movement, why the fuck you didn't stop him? He said, well, you know, we were buddies in high school. You know, you was high school once. We don't, you do anything to protect your buddies. And you don't back them out. You don't do anything to destroy your friendship. I said, me, I must be a different type of breed. Because me, I was the person who was following high people. I was not the person who go get in trouble or put my life in the line. Or take, get my life taken away or go to jail for somebody's stupidity. If I'm in a room and you did something that I don't like and I know it's going to be crime worthy and I could get myself put in jail because be witnesses. I, no, no, no. If you try to rape somebody in front of me, I will not have that. I will tell you to stop, get you off and they'll fight you, or I would left that shit. I said, no, leave, no, you're not having that. We're not having that. We're not raping nobody. Fuck out of here. So. That was that. So he said, Andrew, say, no, we got to believe it. We need to find out if Andrew is one. So you want to help us out and all that stuff. So he went on the ride. They got Chris went on the ride to talk to Andrew. Talk about different things. And Chris was telling him, you need to calm down. You need to stop what you're doing because it's not looking good. It's getting out of hand. I can't keep coming for you. He said, yo, buddy, what's going on? So I understand. Lord, but why are we stopping now? And everything's good. They ain't got nothing. And he said, what happened on so He said he did something. And he confessed, basically he said that he did something to the girl Kayla. And the wine said that he boing the you know, stuff in the back or whatever. I said, oh, okay. And then when it came to about the Bethany, he said, Bethany, all that stuff like that. And he said, you know you did that with Bethany? He said, what? No. You mad that she didn't want you and all that stuff? You the one who put yourself on her. So basically... Andrew confirmed what Bethany's saying, and he said, you know what, Bethany said, you know what, let's go in there and arrest both of their asses. I said, ooh, arrest them, go ahead, arrest them, and arrested, um, arrested Andrew for the rape of Kayla, because he confirmed it on tape, and they arrested Chris for raping Bethany, because Andrew wholeheartedly corroborated Bethany's story that it was you Chris that forced yourself on it was you that did all that stuff it wasn't Andrew you trying to put on Andrew because they was very messing with Andrew as the rapist and you don't want to be called the rapist so you want to use Andrew as a scapegoat for something that you know you did so and that's what they told they told Andrew that Chris was wearing a wire and he was so pissed off it's like damn I said yo you gotta be careful we don't know when they put their life in the line they can get in trouble they would definitely turn that was that, and then the last scene, it was like, um, Kayla came, and she wanted to thank them for helping them believe in her, and being there, and doing this, and they just told them that, told Kayla that, they're going to reopen the cases of the three women in Brooklyn, and she was happy about that, and he said, well, she asked, is Andrew will get out, he said, well, if the things go well, he won't be getting out anytime soon, and she was happy about that. But that was the episode. I enjoyed it. I like, like I said, SVU Law and Order have been running for 20 years now. 20 seasons strong and it's still going. And I love every bit of it. Like these shows, this episode's already good. So I might go, I'm probably going to do another one tonight after this video. 
So I can have to do two today and I may have to do two tomorrow. So I can be caught up with all the Law and Order and I can't wait till next Thursday when I continue the reviews on Law and Order. I only want to show only reality TV shows. I want to show you different interests I have. And Law and Order was something I really like and I could do a, a straight little review. So like that. So please like, comment, subscribe to my channel. Also share my videos to your friends. Let them know about my channel and get them subscribed. And I'll talk to you all later. Peace.